How can photography, How can photography provide photography insights into provide different insights notions, of, into culture different culture and notions of culture and society? Which issues will be tackled, Which issues issues will be tackled, will be tackled and by whom? whom? How can exhibitions and publications, can exhibitions of various, and kinds, publications discuss various points of kinds discuss global points of view? What forms of visual translation can be made use of and do these generate what productive resistance? What forms of visual resistance? translation can be made use of and do these generate productive resistance? What are the limits of networked exchange involving multiple voices? Hello everyone, it's Hannah Dorobi. Uh, I was supposed to give this talk in uh, Folkwang Museum in Essen, but uh, I couldn't travel because of COVID-19 and now I'm talking to you from my studio in Paris. So I'm an Iranian artist based in Paris. I studied photography first uh, at University of Tehran and then I came here to do a master's at University of Paris 8. And since I'm working uh, as an uh, artist photographer here, and uh, artist book has a privileged place in my practice, and but among other forms of representation, but I say that because I think that's one of the main reasons uh, for uh, me to do this project that I'm going to talk about now, uh, because of this special attention that I pay to artist books and in this case, uh, photo books and even book, the, for, the book as a medium in general. So the, the project that I'm going to present here is entitled Angalab Street a Revolution Through Books, Iran 1979-1983. Uh, this book here was published in occasion of uh, an exhibition in January 2019 at Lobel, which is a place of exhibition uh, dedicated uh, to documentary photography in Paris, and it is co-published by Spectre Books and Lobel. So, a little something about the title of the book. Engalab Street, Engalab is a Farsi word for revolution. And Engalab Street is actually a street in center, located in the center of Tehran. And it's a main artery of a uh, uh, city's cultural life with an important uh, concentration of bookshops and printing houses and publishing houses. And we have at uh, one end the uh, University of Tehran, which is a very big university with different uh, faculties from science to human science and arts. And then uh, at the other end, we have uh, the biggest uh, theater of the country, the city's theater. And uh, this project uh, is uh, based on my personal collection of photo books and uh, political books published between 1979 and 1983. Which, uh, which are also years uh, corresponding to a short period of freedom of speech uh, that has been prevailed af after the end of uh, Pahlavi's regime and at the beginning of what uh, it, uh, that became, uh, as we know today, Islamic government. So in 1979, we have the, for the historical uh, uh, events, 1979, we have this Iranian revolution that ended uh, one political regime and then a year after, we have also Iran 1980, this, the beginning of Iran, Iran, Iraq war, uh, which is uh, very close to the, to the revolution. So in this book, um, we, considered, we considered it as a kind of the continuity of the Iranian revolution. So I'm going uh, to go through the book through the chapters to, to, present, uh, uh, to present you the project. So um, at one point we have uh, the collection, which is uh, uh, based on different accounts of this 1979 uh, revolution. And it's not, uh, it, it does not just reflect the Islamic propaganda, but also the propaganda of uh, other uh, opposition groups. And at the other end of the book, we have my artistic work on this uh, collection 
and uh, the way that I wanted to revive these books and in um, relation to my not only my own experience but also the today and the, and the contemporary events in Iran. So here we have chapter A, which is dedicated to, to the collection of photo books. The photo books uh, are um, here we have uh, so uh, here, the, the photo books are uh, um, divided into three groups, and uh, which is uh, which depends on their role in making the history of the revolution. Uh, I, I talked about this point in my introduction text, but I think it's important to to mention it now, which is the reason uh, that I started to gather the collection at first place. Uh, which was in 2015, was uh, how I accidentally um, found my first book, which is this book, Allah Akbar, uh, photographed uh, by Shahr Khatami. The, it's, it's a book about photographies of Shahr Khatami of the Iranian Revolution, but also it has been conceived by himself. And uh, uh, when I opened the book, I, I found it accidentally in a um, second-hand bookshop in Engelab Street. And so I, the first image that I saw was this image of Ayatollah Khamenei uh, coming out of his residence in Nofle Chateau. And uh, the, the, I, I knew this image very well because this was the image that we had it uh, at the beginning of our, our school books. And when I was growing up, there was a very important circulation of images of the revolution, especially around the time of a uh, revolution anniversary, uh, on school books, TV, uh, all over the, the city. So I suddenly found myself in front of this image and also other images of the book that I knew very well. But I never asked myself uh, who was the photographer first because I just received them as a tools of propaganda. And uh, so I, I didn't want it to go. I think there was this uh, resistance to go further and ask uh, who, who photographed these, uh, these images. And then I also understand that th there is this book, which uh, kind of reveals something interesting about the photography and role of photography in making history. So seeing this book, which was very uh, aware of its role in making the, the story of the revolution, uh, made me thinking that when we receive one single image uh, of, a, of a single photo, we don't know anything about the ideology of the photographer behind it. We don't know, is it just the photo that has been used in a context for propaganda reasons or was that actually the intention of the author? And the book, on the other hand, can otherwise can show us this possibility that we can know. Uh, for example, in, the, in 1979, there were different uh, political groups active in Iran. It was not just Islamists that did the revolution, but there were a variety of leftist parties. And also, even uh, among Islamist parties, there were dif differences. And uh, there was one uh, nationalist party as well. And uh, everyone was had this hope and this goal to, construct, to build a um, democratic uh, uh, government. So in, in the case of Allah Akbar, we understand by Going through the book, we understand, for example, that the author is very pro Khomeini and pro Islamic government. But then there are other books in this collection that reflects otherwise. For example, we have Days of Blood, Days of Fire, uh, which uh, presents the, the work of Bahman Jalali and Rana Javadi. Uh, those are uh, the, one of the two most important documentary photographers of the time. And um, it has been published by an independent uh, publishing house. So there we understand something different about the Iranian revolution, which is not the, the same as Allah Akbar. And 
And then there are other books that communicate. There, there are books done by photographers like this one. There are other books that are communicating just a, a political message. For example, the message of blood and martyrdom. And we can understand uh, very fast from the title that it's about, it's something that is going to talk about martyrdom, which was a, which is an interesting book because it kind of shows that how the idea of martyrdom show, uh, changed through time in Iran. And it was, uh, it was not just reserved uh, to one special group. For example, today is reserved to, to, to ones with the uh, Islamist ideology, but at the time it was otherwise. And then uh, we have books that uh, kind of uh, um, talks about the origins of the of the revolution. Uh, for example, this one that uh, places Ayatollah Khomeini as the origin of the revolution versus another book that places Mossadegh, the prime minister of Shah, as uh, the origin of the revolution. And there are, uh, the books have a variety of forms and shapes. I, uh, I consider some of them as artist books also. It's not because there were artists uh, behind the books and I um, suspect that the authors had the intention of doing an artist book, but for the form of the book for me is uh, very artistic and uh, very special. Which I, uh, I would just, for example, this one, the epic of the revolution of 1979, which is done in a very special way. It's, it contains the collages of uh, all the press photographs of the revolution and they did this very uh, free style uh, interpretation of the uh, Iranian revolution with the slogans. We have Riot, which is a very important book of Kavi Golestan and Muhammad Sayyad. And also this one, one of my favorites, When the Walls Speak Out, which is uh, it, it, it's a very interesting representation of the, the revolution which is different from other books because uh, in every book we have the representation of the revolution through masses of protesting. And in the picture of this one, we, th there is uh, no one in the streets, which is very odd for the, for the time of the revolution, but we have a, a very important number of writings and slogans uh, on, the, on the wall. And uh, when it, you read the slogans, uh, which is in Farsi, but uh, I can read them, and you, you understand this variety of kind of thinking towards revolution and the variety of ideology from leftists to Islamists, and uh, sometimes just individuals that just wanted to a better life, uh, liberty, and democracy. So the second chapter of the book, just to, as we, I go through the book, and now I, I should say that there is a, a very important number of books uh, speaking about Iran-Iraq war as well. There is about uh, mm, 40 photo books, and each of them narrate the, the story of the revolution in a special way. And there is this uh, multiple narration that is very interesting for me. And sometimes they use one photograph in different manners in different books. For example, the photo of this uh, young soldier that has been used in uh, four books in different, in, two books that uh, has been done by the photographer himself. It's a self-published uh, self books. 
And for him, it's just a testimony to Iran-Iraq war, but also this uh, tragedy of uh, young soldiers in the war. But then you have uh, these photos in two other books done by the by one of the organizations, the governmental organizations, and uh, well, pro-Islamist ideas. And then the, this boy, uh, which was 13 or 14, it has been presented as a hero. So we have the second chapter of the book, still talking about the book collection, which is this time political books. Political books, uh, they have a very uh, interesting um, story. So these political books that are uh, also called white covers, it's a um, Farsi, uh, it's a literal translation of its Farsi term. And uh, they has been uh, done by political parties, mostly leftist. And uh, they, they had been published by very modest means and tools like photocopy machines or handwriting. So uh, that's also the reason that we call them white cover because the covers were uh, mostly white. There were no, um, neither time, neither ne tools to, uh, to have a graphic design and to do uh, very sophisticated uh, covers. And also, um, uh, they, we call them Xeroxy, that you can understand what. So they have three uh, different times, and uh, publishing was always very, same as photography, very political in Iran. And uh, for example, the time before the revolution, these books were kind of tools of resistance, and uh, if they were um, also very important in this uh, protest and fight against the dictator regime. So uh, they were illegal. Uh, they were distributed in a very um, hidden manner. Uh, I, uh, I've done some uh, interviews with the activists of the time, and they, they, uh, they told me how they used to publish and circulate these books, which is very interesting. And uh, uh, at the time, um, you can understand that books are very simple. There are lots of uh, handwritings in the books. And then uh, after the revolution, at the beginning of 1979 and the, the, just the first years, there were this uh, freedom, a little window opened. And at the time, these books were not uh, uh, forbidden, so they, they were circulated um, freely in the, in the public space. And uh, you can understand from the covers that the covers are a little bit more sophisticated. There are little less uh, handwritings in the book. And then, uh, um, some year after the revolution, we, which, uh, for example, we can say 1981, 1982, and 1983, you see that the, the production of these books uh, become less and less. And at the time, it, it, they, uh, the, because the opposition groups, uh, I mean, leftists, they have been oppressed by the Islamic government. And even the Islamist uh, parties who were not in, at the same uh, um, um, they, they didn't have the same idea of the, of the Republic Islamic government. They, they have been oppressed. So the book had, uh, disappeared at this time. And now they, you can find them in the public archives of the country. As photo books, you can find them, but they are still tools of propaganda. So they are, they are presented in the archives very close to the to the to the government and to the supreme um, leader, but uh, these books, the uh, political group books, there is no trace of them in the public library or there is no archive of these books. But I find them in uh, in the bookshops in Angalab Street, which is uh, kind of interesting. Here are the interviews. And then uh, the, the artistic part, which is part C. So um, part C is uh, uh, concentrated on my uh, personal uh, work uh, on this uh, collection. 
uh, I found myself in front of this uh, huge amount of uh, images that that was kind of familiar to me, but I never saw them in their original form, meaning books. So uh, I thought uh, it, it's uh, interesting to uh, tell um, the this history of the revolution that is kind of uh, communicated to my generation in a misguided and incomplete and very fragmented way because we have all these different kind of narrations. It depends, each person, depending their idea, their, their political idea, but their kind of thinking has a different um, narration of the uh, history of 1979. And also the books... Uh, they, they tell us uh, the same thing that uh, it's not the same uh, it's not a collective uh, collective collectively one uh, story but uh, different facets and different layers so I um, I call this part reconstructions and there are four reconstruction and each reconstruction is telling the story of the revolution through the books. So I use the images of uh, one or two image, uh, one or two spread of each book, and I put them in conversation with other images, which can be the images of Tehran, the contemporary Tehran that I took. Tehran is also the, the, the city that I grew up in. Uh, our other materials like the uh, photo stills from films or TV, postcards or um, images that, that are coming from uh, family photography. So reconstruction one is uh, focused on th those books that are talking about origins of re revolution. And these dates are the dates that I, we see in the books. So uh, I reconstruct the origin of the revolution in this fragmented way but also it's based on my ideas i don't replace my ideas with the ideas of the book but um, i put them just i confront them with other uh, things that i think it it can add something to the um, to the story of the history history of the revolution and also uh, uh, we can ask question about what what was uh, what uh, has been told and what has not been told. Then we have Reconstruction 2. It's about the revolution. Reconstruction three is the talking about cleaning up the opposition. That's the cleaning up. It's exactly the term that they used to uh, ban the opposition groups uh, from expressing the, themselves. But also there was this uh, movement of cleaning up the the culture and the university. And that was the moment that they started to fire people in, active in the culture and in the universities that they didn't have the uh, same ideology of, as, uh, as the government. When I use the uh, images of the books, I also sometimes find very interesting images in the propaganda, even propaganda books, that uh, reveal something that is not uh, told today by the government. For example, in the case of uh, the first protest of women, which, uh, um, which was uh, very uh, shortly after the, the revolution. So revolution, uh, the official date is uh, February 1979, and uh, the... the uh, women protest was March 1979, and it was against the, the new law for uh, obligatory uh, uh, hijab. So uh, this is, for example, this um, part of the history of the revolution that is uh, today that it's not told in the official uh, medias. But uh, here, some of these images are coming from some books done by the government itself. 
they are uh, presenting these images, which is uh, interesting, but th there is this narration or title that shows that they are anti-revolution. But we understand that, okay, there is something here that we don't see every day, but then there is this uh, writing that says, oh, okay, these people were actually anti-revolution. And uh, I put, for example, this image that uh, shows women in a very, um, uh, they, they are not massive, uh, it's not a massive uh, protest, and uh, it says that they are anti-revolution in front of the other uh, image of a women protest coming from another source, and we we see actually it was a very massive uh, protest, and uh, actually uh, women are asking for liberty. So, um, as I told before, the Iran-Iraq war happened one year after the, the revolution. So, uh, obviously, war is a very important part of the work as well. And, the, and there is one reconstruction that is uh, totally, uh, entirely about the Iran-Iraq war, which continued eight years. And it was, a, for me, a, somebody who grew up in Iran, it was a huge part of my existence and growing up. So what was very important, this is, oh, because here, here we have this uh, image, is the, the image of the child soldier that I told before. Here we have the, the original and here we have the one that uh, we, uh, we had it in our school books. With the caption says, we will fight till victory. So this project uh, for me was very important to, to show all these uh, layers and facets of the, of the Iranian uh, revolution, but also how photography, what's the role of photography? And even the question, is photography, uh, is one photography enough to show uh, an event like in a revolution? We can ask that because now we have, for example, the uh, Arab revolution, we have other events, and how image can really contribute to one event or is unable to actually contribute to that. So here it is. Thank you very much to listening to me and bye.